Dear Patriots, before the news starts, please, subscribe to our patriotic channel by clicking the subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up to this video. Don't forget to leave your opinion below in the comments section. Share the news on Facebook and Twitter so you friends see it. Thank you. Robert Mueller rocks DC with major Trump announcement. A disturbing announcement was just made about White House Special Counsel Robert Mueller's investigation that has Donald Trump's supporters praying for him. Fox News reported that Judge Andrew Napolitano warned that anyone who thinks Mueller's investigation is winding down is in for a big surprise. I believe he's gearing up and the president remains in his crosshairs, Napolitano said during an appearance on Fox & Friends. New reports have indicated that Mueller's team has interviewed George Nader, a businessman who advised United Arab Emirates leaders and visited the White House frequently last year. Mueller is now trying to figure out if the UAE bought political influence with the Trump campaign. Napolitano added that the recent guilty plea by Rick Gates, the longtime business partner of indicted former campaign chairman Paul Manafort, has provided Mueller's team with a treasure trove of information. Though Gates worked on Trump's campaign and frequently visited the White House, he and Manafort are facing charges that predate the campaign. Napolitano made sure to point out that Gates originally faced exposure to up to 40 years in prison based on all the charges Mueller filed. He pleaded guilty and his exposure went from 40 years to 3 years. He obviously is prepared to tell them a lot of information to get that exposure to go way down, this is unbelievable, he said. The Fox News senior legal analyst also discussed the strange events surrounding fired Trump aide Sam Nunberg, who dared Mueller to arrest him and refused to go before a grand jury. Why he did what he did yesterday, I don't know. Unless he really wanted to discredit himself or he really was inebriated, Napolitano said. It's sad that this witch hunt against Trump is being allowed to continue despite the fact that Mueller has found no concrete evidence against him. What do you think about this? Let us know your thoughts in the comments section. Uh-oh! Obama in talks with Netflix to develop radical left TV series. Barack Obama refusing to leave the public spotlight. Doesn't he know his 15 minutes are up? Shame! The Obamas are now negotiating with Netflix to develop a series. From Downtrend Netflix is apparently too successful and needs to hemorrhage some cash. They've already dropped millions on flops from Dave Chappelle and Will Smith so now they want to pay Barack Obama big bucks for a TV series even liberals couldn't bring themselves to watch. Remember how brain he was as president? Now imagine that in TV show form. The Daily Wire has more. The real first reality star president is in talks with Netflix. On Thursday, The New York Times reported that former first couple Barack and Michelle Obama are in talks with Netflix concerning a potential series of shows for the streaming service. According to 44, his administration was scandal-free. He actually said that. From Washington Examiner Former President Barack Obama appeared to take a thinly veiled shot at President Trump and his administration during a closed-door speech in Boston last week, saying that his White House didn't have a scandal that embarrassed us. Obama made the comment Friday while addressing attendees at the MIT Sloan Sports Analytics Conference, hosted by the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. Strict rules were put in place prohibiting the sharing of images and video of the off-the-record speech. We didn't have a scandal that embarrassed us, Obama said. I know that seems like a low bar. He also said, you didn't hear about a lot of drama inside our White House. Breitbart has more. But Obama failed to mention reports of his press secretary Robert Gibbs's cursing at Valerie Jarrett and First Lady Michelle Obama. Gibbs left the administration soon after. Obama admitted there were arguments among his team of rivals in the White House but said it was more about people trying to solve tough issues. I did have a strong bias towards people who just wanted to get things right, get things done, as opposed to people who were obsessed with I want to be right. I want to prominent. I want to have my name in the headlines, he said. And if you can create that culture, then you are more likely to be successful.
Just go away, please. Say what? Hillary Clinton to receive major award for her impact on society, America laughs. Hillary Clinton deserves nothing. Her malfeasance over the decades has been well documented, not that the far-left mainstream media seems to care. Now, Harvard will honor Hillary with an award for her impact on society. This is absurd. From downtrend. This is rich. Hillary Clinton will be honored with an award from Harvard for her transformative impact. I know this seems funny, but I kind of agree with it. She did, after all, transform a guaranteed 2016 Democratic presidential win into the Trump White House. She transformed solid blue states into Republican Electoral College votes. She transformed lifelong middle-class Democrats into Trump supporters. I doubt this is the point of the award but like it or not she does have amazing transformative abilities. More from The Hill Former presidential hopeful Hillary Clinton will receive an award in May for her impact on society from the Radcliffe Institute for Advanced Study at Harvard University, according to a press release. Clinton, a former Secretary of State, will receive the Radcliffe Medal on May 25, an award that recognizes individuals who have had a transformative impact on society. Past award recipients include Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg, former Federal Reserve Chairwoman Janet Yellen and former Senator Elizabeth Dole, RNC. During a recent short speech, Clinton couldn't get through it, constantly coughing and stopping for water. From Breitbart Hillary Clinton's latest rallying cry for women's activism was disrupted by a coughing fit, recalling her health struggles on the 2016 campaign trail. Clinton spoke for about eight minutes on Wednesday for a live stream video to the 2018 Makers Conference, urging women to continue fighting to keep sexism out of politics. The Federalist has more on Hillary. A significant part of the Federal Bureau of Investigation's basis for investigating the Trump campaign's Russia ties is looking more and more like a political hijab carried out by the Democratic National Committee and the Hillary Clinton campaign. Her campaign's fingerprints are on at least three separate pieces of information fed to the FBI, including the Christopher Steele dossier Republicans say form the basis of a secret warrant obtained to spy on Trump campaign associate Carter Page. A former State Department official confirmed on the record Thursday that Clinton associates were funneling information to Steele as he was compiling a dossier commissioned and paid for by the Clinton campaign and DNC. That's on top of the recent revelation that a top Department of Justice official fed the FBI information compiled by his wife, who is working for the firm Clinton and the DNC were paying to dig up dirt on Trump, Fusion GPS. Is this real life? CNN investigated town with mandatory gun ownership, what they found destroys the liberal anti-gun narrative. CNN, of all places, stumbled upon a story about gun control that throws the entire liberal argument that more guns lead to more violence into complete disarray. The story involves the town of Kennesaw, Georgia, which has a unique law on its books that many believe dates back to its founding, but was only enacted in 1982. Kennesaw with its population of 33,000 residents, requires some citizens to own a gun. The law states that every head of household residing in the city limits is required to maintain a firearm, together with ammunition. With every liberal media outlet declaring that guns themselves cause violence, one would have to assume that Kennesaw looks like an old Wild West town, shootouts at the local bar, duels at high noon. What CNN discovered, however, would likely startle every gun grabber in America. Today, Kennesaw, a town of about 33,000 people, CNN reported, has had one murder in the last six years and a violent crime rate of below 2 percent. CNN couched their findings by saying it's unclear whether that has anything to do with the gun law, while other leftist fact-checking outlets have declared the story false due to it being impossible to draw a correlation. Yep. 
It surely is a mystery why nobody in a town full of potential gun owners is trying to commit violent crimes. Must be the water. Here's the kicker, the report indicates that local police rarely enforce the law requiring firearm ownership. It's a deterrent, criminals knowing that the town of Kennesaw and in fact, any property within that town, is not a gun-free zone. Kennesaw Mayor Derek Easterling explained, if you're going to commit a crime in Kennesaw and you're the criminal, are you going to take a chance that that homeowner is a law-abiding citizen, owns a gun? Exactly. And by extension, if you're a deranged shooter who wants to kill students in a school, are you going to take a chance that resource officers, retired veterans, or even school teachers are armed? You'll sure as hell think twice. Those violent incidents would drop, no doubt. Do you think gun ownership deters criminals? Would you like to see mandatory gun laws in your town? Share your thoughts below.